you're not putting your trust in one party. But it doesn't mean the system you can't trust. You can completely trust the system because you have uh, the community of people who are there seeing what's going on and confirming those transactions and the activity that are happening on the blockchain. Hey folks, Flo here with Blockchain North. Today I'm interviewing Billy Siebel, who is the executive director of XDC Foundation. This interview is part of our media partnership with Boston Blockchain Week, which is uh, happening in Boston between September 8th and the 12th. Billy, a warm welcome to you. Thanks, Flo. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, glad to be here. It's a pleasure, of course. Um, let me start with an easy question. Why does the world need crypto right now? <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, maybe that's not so easy to answer for everybody, but I think the simple one is that uh, there are qualities to or characteristics to blockchain that allow you to do things that you can't otherwise do. I mean, at the simplest form, immutability, uh, you know, a, a consensus network, having multiple eyes on something, uh, being what we call trustless, where you're not having like one trusted partner or party that you're relying on. You know, blockchain really kind of creates an environment where uh, you're, you're not dependent on that. And I think that that's a really important thing. Verification, those types of things. And I think actually really the other thing, really most importantly for what we do is uh, the ability to move money quickly and inexpensively. I want to double tap two seconds on the trust issues, because I imagine that if someone is new to crypto or even on the fence, they might be like, well, isn't it a good thing to have trust in a system or in a counterparty? Yeah, well, it's funny because we use the word trustless in blockchain, uh, which essentially just means that you're not putting your trust in one party. But it doesn't mean the system you can't trust. You can completely trust the system. It actually makes the, more, the, the system more trustworthy because you have uh, the community of people who are there seeing what's going on and confirming those transactions and the activity that are happening on the blockchain. So Great answer. that's an important distinction. Absolutely. So XDC, I, I don't know a ton about, but from what I read, it is what you would call an enterprise blockchain. Can you explain what that means? And, and fundamentally, what problem are you solving in a I guess you could say in a world where there are, you know, so many blockchains. Sure. Yeah. Well, I think that when you look at uh, XCC network, uh, historically speaking, it's really pretty clear. We are a trade finance focused blockchain and uh, we're EVM compatible, smart contract platform that has really focused our energies, tools and integrations, our ecosystem around building a blockchain that can handle traditional finance on chain. And when you think about trade finance and you know, there's tokenization, there's real world assets, and there's many pockets or niches within that that you could focus on. And for us, we've really been focused on that trade finance piece, which is a you know, $9 trillion market that has a massive multi-trillion dollar trade gap where companies across the world are not able to get financing. And uh, this is something that blockchain very simply can resolve uh, or solve for what's happening locally. But um, it's also something that has been inaccessible traditionally to a lot of people. And so we're trying to create that accessibility and the ability to kind of make the world go around by helping to finance SMEs across the globe. Who's the hardest to convince in your world in terms of stakeholders, basically? What's what's the roadblock in terms of getting people to see, well, you know, don't you get it? <laughs> this yeah, is, yeah. you know, this is what we're talking about. It's pretty freaking awesome, you know? Um, yeah. Well, you, you know, banks are, I would say, the most risk averse uh, institutions on the planet, in my mind. Uh, they work at, uh, obviously their margins are close and they don't want to take a lot of risk. 
And so, uh, you know, you would think that they would look at a system and think, wow, this is something that can really improve our business. But you have a lot of these that not only are very, you know, traditional in how they operate, uh, but they're adverse to change. So I, I think that it takes a lot to get uh, into that space and to break through with a lot of these banks. And uh, therefore you end up having uh, non-bank originators and, and other types of in investors, liquidity providers coming into the market uh, because the banks are like, well, you try it. And if it really works, then we'll go down that path. Um, but I will say to that point, uh, I haven't been in a room where I've talked to somebody from any major top bank across the globe that is not doing something in blockchain. Everybody is doing something. Yeah, sure, of course. And um, so, so XTC is involved with the Boston Blockchain Week, which uh, this interview is part of our media partnership with, uh, with the event and with this uh, week-long, really, uh, kind of ecosystem gathering. Um, what's XTC's relationship with, uh, with Boston? Yeah, well, it's my hometown, so. <laughs> <laughs> Good. All right, next That's question. That's the best one right there. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's funny. I, I was actually really excited about Boston Blockchain Week because... For me, it was an opportunity for us as a network to really get involved in something here. You know, there's a lot of different things that are happening in New York or we're kind of traveling from, uh, you know, one event to another, um, but nothing that was specific to what was happening here. And so, uh, you know, I think for me, a lot of what we're trying to do is bring the idea of the, the that really trade finance is really the greatest opportunity in blockchain for, you know, tokenized assets, you know, it's a hugely untapped market. It's, um, it's a, uh, the most risk averse and inflation proof asset that you can actually, um, you know, own. And uh, really, it, you know, it, it finances the shirt on your back or mine, it finances that microphone of yours. You know, these are the ways in which we actually get the things in our lives that we want to have and need to have. So to me, uh, it's really important that we expand and go to places like Boston Blockchain Week and talk to people about what it is that we are doing. Uh, yeah. And, and finally, uh, we ask all of our interviewees, what's your surest prediction for blockchain and crypto? Something high conviction, perhaps contrarian? As a, you know, with blockchain, I know there's a lot of people that are into the idea of that there's going to be this massive reset. And, um, you know, all of a sudden, you know, crypto, Bitcoin, whatever is going to be, will be the financial rails for everything that happens. And um, and I think that's just like a, it's a fun story for people to tell. But I, I just don't see any of that actually happening. I mean, markets go through all sorts of turmoil. And obviously, we have a lot of challenges in this country with uh, the national debt and, you know, how it continues to pile up. Uh, the printing of money and all of that. And those are things that definitely benefit blockchain and crypto specifically. But um, I believe there is a solution somewhere that uh, crypto can uh, help make a difference and can solve some of these problems. But I don't think that there's like this massive reset one day and all of a sudden everybody's dealing in um, crypto. It just doesn't work that way. So um yeah, it's a, it's a very, very realistic and, and more nuanced perspective that is worthwhile sharing for sure. The integration is actually is actually more smooth and and and, and perhaps less disruptive than we imagined it, at least at least, you know, over the short or medium term. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Thank you very much, Billy. Pleasure yeah, speaking with you. Thanks, Flo. I appreciate you.